The COVID-19 pandemic has spared no sectors as it continues to ravage the global economy, leaving, among others, jobs, supply chains, and healthcare structures in its wake. One sector impacted by the pandemic, which we are yet to talk about in Nigeria, is real estate. But we are about to take care of that right now. Joining me to uh, discuss this is uh, two players in the real estate market, Amara Musa, the Chief Operating Officer of REN Regent, and Damola Akindolire, Managing Director of Alpha Mead Properties Limited. Good morning to you both. Uh, first of all, I want to put up this uh, chart uh, for our viewers looking at the performance of the real estate with regards to real estate GDP from Q1 2018 through to uh, Q4 2019. Needless to say, uh, real estate uh, is in a recession and uh, it's been struggling. Um, but some players, it looks like some players are still doing well. Amara, let me start with you. Uh, welcome. Um, from your view in the market, uh, how much of a disruption have you seen in terms of number of appointments booked to view properties and closing of sales, if any? Hi, Rotas. Um, firstly, I want to say that um, to, to analyze number of sales against the appointments wouldn't be the correct way to do it in Nigeria. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, we're more of a cash-based system. Our mortgage system isn't as sophisticated as our international um, counterparts. That being said, I think the best way to look at it is one of perception. How has the perception been towards the real estate market? Now, what I find happening is a lot of people need a reorientation of what to expect out of the real estate market. People want more value for their money. So what um, a lot of people in the industry are bound to do is to try to position the client or the potential buyer towards what the value of their money can actually purchase purchase. So you find people with their money and they want a mansion in Banana Island with very limited funds. So one is, one is, one is um, challenged to actually educate the client on what the value of their money can actually get. I think that's the best way to answer that. All right. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Amara. Uh, Damola, let me uh, come to you. Uh, there's a report uh, that talks about uh, having an online discussion on remote real estate and transacting in property remotely. How, how practical is this for the sector? And do you think industry players in real estate have any choice in the matter due to the impact of COVID-19? Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, well, it's the new reality as we see it, because um, we the real estate industry is a really it's a slow adapter of uh, adoption. Uh, we are really slow in adopting technology. So, however, um, quite a number of players have migrated, and they started adopting some measure of um, uh, remote engagements. Uh, this includes virtual tours of um, real estate assets. Um, we're beginning to see uh, more discussions around a blockchain and how blockchain can enhance real estate transactions. Um, and that would also bring some measure of efficiency. And then we're also seeing uh, the issue of fractional ownership of assets becoming the new reality in the market. So um, remote uh, engagements would definitely have to take precedence over physical uh, site engagements and physical uh, engagement with the clients. So the element of trust, which is a lacking future, uh, would have to use technology as a means to enhance that factor so that customers can feel comfortable and secure uh, carrying out real estate transactions. Thank you for that. Uh, Amara, let me uh, come back to you. Um, since we're talking about you know, the adoption of technology, until that happens full scale, can you practice social distancing while showing off a property to a client? Is that even practical? And if it is, how would it work? That's a very, very good question, Rotas. Um, what I like to say is that in a property inspection, um, every client does actually need social dis distancing to even um, allow the client or the potential buyer to get an idea of what it feels like to be in that space. Um, buying property is an emotional thing. So one actually needs space and room to actually do that. That being said, the COVID pandemic has caused um, a huge constraints in certain things. 
like touching of door handles, um, touching of um, sanitary wares, um, aluminium. So um, doing things, taking precautionary measures like wearing masks and um, using your hand sanitizers to protect the clients is adequate. Additionally, with the rise in technology, virtual tours are taking a steady increase in the real estate marketing space. So you find that there are options in um, using technology to um, enhance um, viewings. So virtual tours, walkthroughs, your client can be at home while you have a video call walking them through. But notwithstanding, there is nothing the same as being in the property and getting the experience live and direct. All right, thank you for that, Amara. Okay, Damal, let me come back to you. I'm still on that report. It also talked about uh, mortgage and rent defaults in a post-COVID ni uh, Nigeria. Um, is there any room for collaboration with insurance companies to create products that protect mortgage and rent payments, at least for a period of time? Yeah, I mean, thank you very much. That's really a vital question. The insurance industry has not really stepped up to play its critical role in enhancing home ownership in Nigeria. And I'll say this from two perspectives. Um, one of the areas you look at that is a critical bottleneck in home ownership is the issue of land title. So we find ourselves, um, because of the bureaucratic nature of uh, transferring title from one party to the other, we should have a situation where we can get things like title insurance, where in the process of transferring title from one party to the other, uh, transactions can still go on seamlessly and mortgages can be created. That is one area that we, we have not really taken a close look at. And then also, when it comes to um, the issue of defaults, there are currently products in the market that support this kind of engagements. Um, I do know insurance companies take what we call credit life insurance, um, permanent disability insurance covers, and so on and so forth. So if you have a mortgage, it's very unlikely that the mortgage would not be protected by any of this kind of insurances. So um, the mortgage industry definitely will be seeing a rise in claims um, because of uh, some measure of job loss that may occur as a result of slowdown in economic activities. So I'll say from the post-mortgage point of view, yes, the insurance industry is playing a support, but from a pre-mortgage point of view, more work still needs to be done from the insurance industry. All right. Thank you, uh, Demola. Uh, Amara, back to you. Okay, you just talked about uh, the rise in virtual tours. Uh, you need help, help me out here. Are there viewing parties for showrooms when you're showing off properties? Is that um, where you show it to a group of people? If that, if, I want to know if that exists in Nigeria. And if it does, is that now you know, completely dead because of the banning of groups of people coming together? So, Rotus, what you're referring to are open houses. Ah. Thank you. Yes. So um, open houses are basically um, a scheduled um, opening for the property that allows people to come in and view the property. And yes, indeed, we do have open houses here in Nigeria that cater to all um, segments of the market. Um, yes, there is no doubt that open houses will be impacted by this. However, there can be ways around it. You can cater to a selected number of individuals who have actually actively engaged in interest in that particular property. Um, like I said initially, we can use sophisticated softwares available, such as virtual tours, where people can actually navigate. Um, Instagram, Facebook, social media, they are taking the stance in the, in the real estate market. And we can have live sessions. You can see people engaging in live IGs. And that can be applicable to the real estate market as well. So though open houses may be um, discomforted by the situation, it doesn't exempt the fact that there are many, many, many options for people to partake and enjoy the experience of an open house. All right, thank you. And thank you for correcting me on that term. So open houses, I've le learned the term now. Uh, Damola, um, I wanted to ask about supply chain disruptions. This is on the industrial side. I've only got a couple of minutes. I'll quickly uh, share this couple of minutes between you two. Um, the need for warehousing because of supply chain disruptions on the industrial side of real estate, is that going to create a problem for logistics or reduce demand for it? Okay, um, well, again, the supply chain disruptions definitely will have an impact. 
However, one of the industries we see that would um, have a bit of a, well, would experience a bit of a neutral impact is uh, the logistics and uh, warehousing. Um, the need, because of the uh, increase in um, guidelines or restrictions of movements, um, warehouses would be the only logical distribution focal points for retailers and wholesalers. So there will definitely be some disruptions in the supply chain process itself, but that would not necessarily have an immediate impact on the subsector, which is the industrial sector uh, and, uh, that accommodates warehousing and so on and so forth. So we still see yields continue to go uh, to be steady in that space, and we still see strong demand for uh, industrial real estate assets. All right, thank you for that, Demola. Um, Amara, real quick, on the commercial side, co-working spaces, do you see that under threat because of how close people have to sit with regards to the impact of COVID-19? Co-working spaces, would they be impacted? Well, yes and um, no. Yes, in the sense that everything is impacted by this pandemic. Um, co-working spaces inclusive. However, um, what, what I would say is that co at this time, co-working spaces will be actively reviewing their business models. So usually a co-working space would usually have a long lease on a property um, and they've accounted for that long lease with how many chairs they've been able to use to occupy the space in order to guarantee them um, income on their investment. Now, what has to happen is that a lot of co-working spaces have to de-densify their spaces such that not as many chairs as before. Does this affect income? Yes. However, it makes it safer. Multinationals at this point will be trying to ease out of their long-term contracts in their tenancy agreements. Um, and they will be looking for more flexible options, which actually makes the concept of co-working very, very interesting at this time. Multinationals will probably want to break up their company into different um, little space um, pieces such that people can be in different locations and closer to home. So I do not think that co-working spaces are doomed, but I do think that a review of their business models is necessary to cater for the new norm. All right, we've run out of time. Wish I could have you guys on for longer, but thank you so much, Amara Musa, the Chief Operating Officer of REN Regents, and Damola uh, Akindolire, the Managing Director of Alpha Meat Properties. Thank you so much for your insights on the real estate sector and how it's been affected by COVID 19.